First Corinthians, the second chapter, Paul wrote and he said, my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of men's wisdom. I think that he was led by the Spirit of God to write that because it applies to me. <laughs> um, it's, not, it's not our salesmanship. It's not our persuasive words of men's wisdom. Um, but in, in, listen, in demonstration of the Spirit. And he didn't stop there. He said, it's in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And that word power is where we, it's dunamis, it's where we get the word dynamite. So it's explosive power. You know, I, there's, there's people, you guys grow up with, with people that'll say, well, God spoke to me. I heard God's voice. And, and then people say, is it an audible voice? I would hesitate to ever say it is just so you know. Um, for me, I, I don't look at it or, or, or define it as a, an audible voice because it's beyond our senses. See, God operates, a, God is spirit, and he operates outside of our senses. So we're not looking for a sign. We're not, we're not trying to hear a voice. God, God speaks to us in our spirit, man, our spirit. And in Zechariah 4.6, so he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So it's not our strength, it's not our ability, it's not even how much we have or how many of us there are, it's by his spirit. Write that down, it's by his spirit. Is it the will of God for you to have your bills paid? Is it the will of God for you to be out in front of your finances? Is it the will of God for you to raise great kids? Is it the will of God for you to be healthy? Yes, absolutely, unequivocally. I'm telling you, God's promised you a long, healthy life. But you know what? We've got to stay on that path, that redemptive path that God's, God's paid for us to be able to live. In 1 Kings, the 19th chapter in the 11th verse, then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Now listen, in the word where, the, where mountain, it, it's translated mountain without a surname, it's not actually a land, it's actually an authority. So he said, go out and stand on, that, on the authority before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. This is interesting. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. Now listen, but the Lord wasn't in the wind. See, as much wind is blowing today that's blowing worldly authorities apart, I'll tell you, what, what the enemy does is he overplays his hand, hand he overpromises what he can produce, and you know what? Begin, they begin to devour one another, our enemies. That's how demonic spirits operate. But the Lord wasn't in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord wasn't in the fire. And now listen. And after the fire, a still small voice. Man, wait a second. The, the wind that busts a mountain apart and the, an earthquake and a fire, that, that feels like that would probably be how God works. He's so... So amazing, no, you know what, how amazing God is? He operates by a still, small voice. You wanna hear God's voice? You've gotta enter into his rest. You wanna hear God's voice? You've gotta trust the peace that Jesus gave us, the peace that Jesus left us, not as the world gives. See, so now in that peace, so, so let me just help you. A parallel of hearing God's voice is occupying and living in God's peace. See, I've lived my Christian life. I don't, I don't remember how I heard it. I don't remember when I read it. But the whole idea of finding my peace has been paramount in my, in my life for, since 1979. I get, we're going to make a decision. We're going to build out that kid's building. All Sandy and I do is find our peace. And then it's like, let's go. Turn it loose. Man, there are, there are properties that we have offers in on right now in this area that we just have to find our peace. And you know what? That's what we're going to go with. And see, the idea of this is you find your peace, and that's how you make a decision. You find your peace, and that's when you hear God's voice. That still, small voice. It's peace. 2 Corinthians 3.14, Paul writes, and I'm going to go 
chapter 3 and then bounce to 4 and then go back to chapter 3. But their minds were blinded. But until the day, and he's talking about the Jews here, that they, 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 they're studying Moses, they're speaking after the law. But what, what was it? Their minds were blinded. Let me tell you, man, the prince and the power of the air and religion, it's just going to blind our eyes to what God's really about, what God's really doing. See, what's amazing about this, you go back to, you go back to what God was going to do with Zerubbabel, and, and, and when it got to the still small voice, it started with a wind, it's, and then an earthquake, and then a fire. That's what's happening in our, in our society today. Man, wind is just blowing people apart. Man, and, and tossed to and fro. Man, double-minded people. But, but, then, but, but then there's an earthquake. It's like, oh my gosh, the earth's quaking. Man, everything that's going on, that, it must be God. It must be God. No, God's always in that still, small voice. God's always in that place of peace. All the fire. No, our God's a consuming fire. And guess what? It starts from us. It starts right here. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Please hear this. I love the Old Testament. I really do. It's a type and shadow of what's to come. There's not light in it. There's not life in it. Man, the light and the life comes when we cross the bridge of the four gospels and get to the new and better covenant. And then to me, it's literal. Man, we live by it. But, they're, but they're, these guys were living in that Old, Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. See, we've got to get on the God side of that veil. And so many people, so many people just live their lives knowing about God, knowing of God, and bump it into them once in a while in their life. It's like, man, I ran into Jesus. He impacted my life. So many people, we've had, listen, over 600,000 salvations in the 32 years of this church, 31 and a half years. And it's awesome, and we can plug, but let me just tell you, they, they, a lot of people just bounce off. Why? Because they just cut, they bump into an, an occasion with Jesus or an encounter with Jesus or an experience with Jesus. And this is all about commitment because this is covenant. God wants to make covenant with us. God wants, God wants to, to appear in our life, in our lives, so that we can disappear in his life. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. See, this is the world. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil's taken away. See, I, I want to announce to you that the veil between you and God has been removed. See, what's awesome is Jesus tore it when he died on the cross. But Paul's talking about in the resurrection, now that we live in this new and better covenant, that that veil isn't just torn, that veil's been removed. See, 2 Corinthians 4 then talks about their minds were blinded. Man, think about this. We're listening to prognosticators and predictors, people that are historians, and history's going to repeat itself. Let me help you. I broke that curse. I'm not going to live my history anymore. See, there's people that'll talk about a generational curse, and it's like, yeah, you want that, you can have that, but I've got a generational choice. Why are we building that kids' church? We're going to offer a generational choice. Man, what, what, why are we going to build out other things? Because we're offering a choice to families, to generations, that you don't have to live with the alcoholism, the drug abuse, and the regret, and the shame, and everything that, that, that families pass on to each other. Man, Sandy and I got married on our honeymoon. Man, we got into a deep discussion about family. And she said, I'm not, I'm not carrying my heritage into our family. I said, I'm not either. So we held hands and we broke any generational thing off our lives that didn't honor God. And now it's 40 years later. Three kids and 10 or 11 grandkids. I mean, you look at it, see, our, why? Our minds aren't blinded anymore. See, I think the world calls it an epiphany or an enlightenment or an illumination. Man, do you understand 
that the devil uses those kind of terms, our society uses those kind of terms as counterfeits. Do you understand? You're the illuminated ones. You're the enlightened ones. You're the ones that carry, listen, the message of hope that the world's looking for. Because the world's generally hopeless. And who do we trust? Man, who do we vote for? Who are we going to trust? Which party are you? What? I'm telling you, in, in, in the wars that are going on all over the globe, who do you trust? Man, do you understand, just in the last few years, we've been involved in 14 or 15 wars. It's like, wait a second. The juice has to be worth the squeeze. We, the war we have is spiritual. The war we have is for souls. That's why, you know what I'm proclaiming today? A huge migration of souls to come to the kingdom. And people not just have an experience with Jesus and bounce off, but people to stick and be able to raise their families and grow in God and create a new legacy about their lives. See, it's always faith, listen, then understanding. See, God gave me a measure of faith. In 1979, when I gave my life to Jesus, I had very little understanding of it. So here's what's going to happen. That understanding is going to develop because of the faith that we trust in. Because see, that's what faith is. Faith, the Greek word faith for faith is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. And you know what? A, a synonym of faith is just trust. So the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not, don't ever lead your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what? He's going to direct. Now listen, your paths, your path as a man, your path as a husband, your path as a wife, your path as a mother, your path as a grandmother, your path as an employer, your path as a, as a Christian. God's going to direct your paths. See, and it's always faith and then understanding. And faith it, it, it's just our, confident, our confidence in his nature, his abilities, and his promises. See, it's real easy for me. People will say, well, you know, my grandmama died. God took her. That's not God's nature. I know that's not true. I don't, I don't see in the word where God takes grandmamas. God doesn't take babies. God doesn't, God, God doesn't cause shipwrecks. God's not causing a train wreck. That's not his nature. So, so we look at it, and what's, our faith is based upon his nature, his abilities, his promises. Because the promises of God are yes and amen. You know what that means? The promises of God are already kept. See, if I make a promise to you, like when Brooklyn was a little girl, she, she wanted a pony. She's like four or five years old. I said, man, when you're 10 years old, I'm going to get you a pony, okay? Because as a dad, that's a way to get off the hook. I can, I, man, I, I live in South Tulsa. There's nowhere to put a pony. I, I'm not a horse guy. I've never saddled a horse. I've never really ridden a horse. I've, 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 it's like, but she wanted a pony. And you know you what? You want to be the man of God in your home. So it's like, I'll get you a pony. She still brings that up to me. She said, yeah, where's my pony, daddy? But see... I'm a man. God's already kept all the promises that he's made. All, all of them. In 2 Corinthians, go back to chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. So we talk about the Holy Spirit like he's the third head of the, the Trinity. No, the Lord's the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. See, Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said, I'll always be with you, even to the end of this age. The age he's talking about is the church age. That's the age we live in right now. See, I'm not just saying that because I pastor a local church. This is, this is the age we're in. And Jesus said, I'm going to be in it till the end of this age. Anyone who views God as their servant or their, their personal ATM, they're always going to be frustrated. See, understand this. I, I, don't look at other people that are frustrated. Look at your own life. My life where I'm frustrated, it's because I'm looking. I'd say, hey, hey, God, come on. I need this to happen. Hey, God, I'm, I'm believing this. And let me just help you. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by me snapping my fingers. It's by his spirit. 
and the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's, and it's for liberty that Christ has set us free. See, this is all about freedom. So what's the, what's, what's the world about? The world is about bondage. The world is about captivity. The world is about slavery. Man, I, I, I talked to the people at John 3.16, and I asked them, I said, the, the homeless and the vagrants of this area, how many of them have been trafficked? And Steve Whitaker said, Pastor, all of them. See, you look at this, and we think that it's this, this miniature little migration of, of traffic that people bring people. No, let me tell you, the world is being trafficked right now. The world is being led by the nose, man, through lies and deceit and counterfeits of, of the life that God's called us to live. And in that, there is no freedom. See, true faith, true faith brings an overconfidence that God is who he says he is. Man, why can we, why can we trust him? Why, how can we live a fearless life? Man, I'll tell you, I've talked about it a number of times. Four years ago this month, man, Pastor Sandy had a liver transplant and, and, and was supposed to be in the hospital for one to three months and was in there for eight days because the COVID hit. She was the last transplant in America when COVID hit. Coincidence, huh? Eight days later, I'm driving, driving her home. And literally, I'm going 90 miles an hour down the turnpike to get home. I got, we, got, we got to get on our turf. And you know what? Not a glitch. Not a speed bump. Not an issue. Why? She didn't, there was no fear. Man, what, what, how's, what's fear doing in your life right now? Because you know what the Bible says? Unrighteous run when nobody's chasing them. 318 says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Listen, we see God's glory, it becomes a mirror of our life. And we're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. See, see where, where Paul's going here is he's saying, look, the transformation on our life, he's, we're going from glory to glory, and you're going to see God's image in your life. See, because here's the deal, write this down, liberty brings transformation. And that's what God's looking to do in our lives. He doesn't want to just make us better. He don't want to rebuild us. He wants to transform us into the image of his son. See, people will say, yeah, but I lost that job. That must be the will of God. Well, wait a second. Maybe you didn't do a good job. Wait a minute. You're talking about the sovereign will of God in the, the, the experiences you've had, and that's not what it is. God's sovereign will of our life is specifically to be transformed into the image of his son. That's the sovereign will of God. And that, that kind of blows away a lot of the Calvinists out there. But see, we've got to understand that. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, now listen, let us, this is how simple it is, Johnny, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us. What do we do? We lay it aside. That means, that means somehow we're, we're carrying this. And let us run with endurance the race that's been set before us. See, the whole idea of this, it, it's about church leadership, church management, church participation, church attendance, church recruiting, it all spans a long period of time. And people, I, I look back on my life, people worked on me for five years with zero impression that it was taking root in me. Zero. And then finally, I got thrown in a, it was a drunk tank is what they used to call it. I don't know what they call it anymore. But, and I'm thinking, it can't get any worse than this. They took my boots. They took my belt. I'm in my early 20s. I'm just standing there. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. I thought, and here's what I thought. It can't get any worse than this. 
The only bad thing I didn't consider is the drain was right here and a passed out drunk was right there. And I was standing between the drunk and the drain when he relieved himself. So as I'm thinking, it can't get any worse than this, it got horribly worse. And I'm standing there with soaked socks, stunned, just thinking, I got to get my life right with God. That's it. It it was 5 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Five hours later, I'm in a church, miserable. An hour after that, I answer an altar call, miserable. I confess Jesus, miserable. And then the pastor said, you're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And something flipped in my life. What happened? One word from God. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Think about how powerful this is. God's, Jesus is authoring your faith. He's finishing that faith. Who, for the joy of being able to do that, said before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The word authors and finishes our faith. How am I going to make it? Man, you, you know the word. You bury the word. You hide the word in your heart. Man, in, in every, if you're a compartmentalizer in every category of your life, find God's word and store it into your heart. Because the word authors and finishes your faith. When your faith is built and relied upon God's word, you're victorious. No matter what. Because our faith is what pleases God. Trust his word solely. We only trust God's word. I'll tell you, this concludes the message, and I got to the end. And I, I, I already gave you a heads up about the end here. If you're under a spiritual assault that is manifest in your life by resistance and pressure and tension and it's just, it, it's daily pounding at your life. Today, you get out from under it. Today is a day that God marked on your calendar of life to be free of, listen, the resistance, the pressure, and the tension you've lived in that's caused dis-ease in your life. And, and, and what... What I want to tell you is bold faith brings quiet trust. And we don't have to yell and scream at the devil. We just have to bind him. We just have to cast him out. See, and he knows if you're playing or not. The seven sons of Siva came to a demoniac. And they said, they said, hey, 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 we take authority over you. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And you know what those sons of Siva said? They said, wait, Jesus we know and Paul we know, but who the heck are you? See, and I think a lot of people are just kind of slap fighting and toying with it. Today, you get out from under it. Because God's proclaimed you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. God's, God is going to put you, listen. You have to come to the understanding. You have trust that you could get to the other side of that veil. But then you have the understanding that veil's been removed. There's nothing between you and God now. I mean, you're, you're permitted to come in here and say, hey, God, it's great to see you. God, it's great to be with you. God, your presence, I've got a, I've got an undo, I've got a joy in my life, God, just because I'm here with you. See, that's the opposite of the of the resistance and the pressure and the tension you've been living with. So if that's you today, I just want you, and, and listen, I know this, I, you just had simple obedience is better than sacrifice. But I'm gonna take authority over the, what is pressuring, what, is, what has been resisting you from overcoming, and the tension you've had in your life. That you're gonna come out from under it, and listen, you're gonna get on top of that tension. You're going to get on top of that pressure. You're going to get on top of that resistance. 
And you know what? I'm going to parallel it to somebody that anaerobic exercise that lifts weights. You slide a couple plates on that bar, a couple extra ones, and you're trying to lift it, and you're trying to, to press it, and it's like, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then you've got somebody that's fought and saying, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And then, and then you do it, and you're like, oh my gosh, I did it. And then you know what? The next time you go to the gym, you put that much weight on there. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, here's what's interesting about this. When it comes to our faith, Jesus is spotting that bar. And it's not too much for him. And I'm telling you, the Spirit of God's here today to tell you, you can do it. You can come out from under it. And let me tell you, I don't play. And the leaders in this church don't play. And we're standing in agreement where this curse that's been suppressing your life is broken in the name of Jesus. If that's you today, I want you to stand wherever you are. Don't let pride or fear or inhibition or insecurity or your manhood keep you from getting out from under this. Because let me tell you something, our God's able. I said our God's able. Devil, I take authority over you right here and right now. The people you're trying to mess with prohibiting them from standing right now. I bind you right now, devil, and I command you to go. Devil, from everybody in this room, I command you to dry place to seek rest and to find none in the name of Jesus. You're, if you're here and there's a bit of suppression on your life, sometimes it's hard to breathe, sometimes it's anxiety, maybe it's a depression that you've been in, let me help you. What you've been dealing with, it messes with the chemicals in your system. And that chemical imbalance causes a depression. And it's scientific. And then you'll, then you'll, get, you'll get science that'll try to medicate that depression to get you to... And you talk to anybody. You talk to almost everybody that's on antidepressants or other kind of medications and it's like I hate it it's like I'm, I'm walking around in a fog I'm numb well that's not the will of God the will of God is for the light to come and the glory of the Lord to shine on you and for you to be more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you if you're sitting right now and you know in your heart you should be standing please get up right now I'm fixing to pray please Because let me, let me help you what the Word says. Because that's all that matters, right, Jen? All that matters is what the Word says. What the enemy's meant for bad. This is the enemy. What the enemy's meant for bad, God turns to good. Listen, God doesn't just remove it. He turns it to good in your life. The enemy meant for it to be bad. And then you know what that good does? It attracts good and perfect gift that comes from above. And then what God ends up doing is heaping blessing upon your life. Now, what does that curse do? That curse suppresses you. What does that blessing do? That blessing lifts you. You know what? Man, the Lord just spoke to me. Jesus despised the shame that was going to be, in, that was going to be applied to our lives. If you live under a shame, I want you to stand. You may have grown up on the wrong side of the tracks. I promise you, I'll take you by the house I was a little kid in. You'll be going, man, I was blessed. A few years ago, I was preaching in St. Louis, so I drove over to East St. Louis, and I drove by the house that I was a little kid in. Two bedrooms, three boys and a parents. And I thought, <laughs> nobody would have dreamt what God, what God was doing. You guys ready to win? Hey, look, no hocus pocus, no fairy dust, no magic wands, no trigger words. 
just simply promises that have been kept. But listen, you're going to be set free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That liberty is all about you right now. But you've got to, you've got to choose to walk in it. The Bible says that the works that God, God's doing in our life, that we have to walk in them. See, there's a walking out. There's a next step. So you guys that are, that are new here, relatively new in the church, just come to breakfast in the North Sanctuary after this service. Why? It's a next step. But listen, the greatest thing about next steps in this situation is here you are in a, in a, a probably a personally horrible situation. You take a step, guess what? You're once removed. And then you know what? Oh my gosh, now you're twice removed. Now I'm way removed. Now it's gone from my life. It's not, and you know what? I, here's what I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you to take a step. Find something to step away from it. But listen, the key is you don't look back. Don't look back. There's nothing you're leaving that you need to look back and check on. You've got to, you've got to separate yourself. and you got to, See, that's the sanctification that God does in our lives. God, I thank you now in the name of Jesus for a supernatural breakthrough in every life that is standing. God, people with physical ailments, people with mental ailments, people with emotional ailments, people with financial ailments, God, whatever it is, God, I come against it right now. Ailments have to go right now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for it, that Jesus being the same yesterday, today, and forever, went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed. God, I thank you that oppression has to leave. God, I thank you right now that you weren't in the wind and you weren't in the earthquake and you weren't in the fire, but that still small voice that we're trusting right now. Now, God, I thank you for a supernatural peace and therefore prosperity to come upon every person that's standing. A supernatural peace right now in the name of Jesus. If you're sitting around people, proclaim peace into their lives. Thank God for the peace that God's given them right now. The peace that Jesus left them that he gives them right now. And God, I thank you that the enemies that they faced up to this point, they'll not see again. God, I call their enemies to be scattered in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for that and I praise you for that. And God, we trust in you. Not our own understanding, but we trust in your promise and your abilities and your nature and your character and your blessing and your word in the name of Jesus. Now, God, I thank you that whatever the devil's meant for bad in their lives, right here and right now, you turn it to good in Jesus' name. That goodness and mercy follow them all the days of their life and they dwell in your house, God. They are not homeless anymore but in your house, God, forever. In the name of Jesus. Now you guys are standing. Make this proclamation of faith with me. God, I thank you today. I agree with everything Pastor Bill said. I receive it in my life without measure. God, your promises are absolutely yes and amen in my life. The promises pertaining why I stood have overcome and decimated the enemies to my soul. I am healthy, happy, and whole. I am healthy, happy, and whole. I am healthy, happy, and whole in the name of Jesus. Now, God, I thank you for that next step. God, you're gonna make it apparent to me. I'm not leaving this room without a plan to take a next step. And God, I purpose and commit to you that I'm not looking back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. 
You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.